And we are live. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Abe Mashney. I'm a criminal defense attorney here in Lexington, Kentucky at the Baldani Law Group. And today we're going to be talking about the new DUI laws that went to, into effect here in Kentucky on July 1st, so a little over a week ago. Um, first, we're going to talk about the major takeaways. Then we're going to talk about uh, discussing a couple practice tips and um, then wrap it up with some questions that that I have that um, are, are un unanswered at this point. So first takeaway, while it may be um, known as the new DUI laws, uh, what this really is, 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 a, is a big ignition interlock law. And um, this, 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 these laws, um, it, it's the major shift is gonna be increasing the penalties for a first offense, but also making it uh, huge incentives to get an ignition interlock um, installed on your vehicle. And so what an ignition interlock is, is it's, a, it's something that you get installed, it's a handheld device, you blow into it before you start the car, and then you're gonna have to blow into it at every 15 minutes or so while you're driving the car, it'll, it'll beep at you, and it makes sure that there's no alcohol on your breath. And so some major national companies um, really lobbied very hard to, to get this passed for, for obvious financial reasons. And so in, in some cases, the ignition interlock is, is gonna be mandatory, um, and, but at the very least, it's gonna be extremely encouraged. And so takeaway number two is the length of the suspensions for a DUI first go up. Uh, under the old law, the length of a suspension was 30 to 120 days for a first offense. Now, under the new law, it is four months if you install an ignition interlock or if you don't install an ignition interlock, then it's six months. And so while we're still a lot lower than uh, a lot of other states around us, uh, a lot of other states for a first offense, you're, you're looking at a year suspension, but the, uh, the penalties do go up uh, for any DUIs that occur after July 1st. And so, but uh, whenever you go up for DUIs looking at um, for, for a second or a third, so for a second, it, it remains the same. So it's 12 months, um, the old law was 12 to 18 months. Now it's 12 months if you get the ignition interlock uh, installed. And if you don't, then it becomes an 18 month suspension. And for a third offense, the old law was 24 months to 36 month suspension. And under the new law, we're looking at an 18 month to, or if you get the ignition interlock, or a 36 month if you don't. So actually under the new law third offense duis they go down um, and so if you get the ignition interlock instead of a 24 month suspension now you're looking at 18 months uh, for fourth and subsequent offenses the old law required a mandatory um, suspension time of 60 months now under the new law that is cut in half and so for fourth and subsequent offenses um, fourth, fifth, sixth, you, you name it, within that 10 year period, uh, if you get an ignition interlock on your vehicle, then you're looking at a 30 month license suspension. And if you don't, then you're looking at a 60 month license suspension. And so another thing that, um, that, that the new law provides is it requires video for in your car to monitor you with this device that's installed. And so the purpose of the video is to, so they can see that, that you are the one that is actually blowing into the ignition interlock and providing that breath sample, and it's not uh, a friend or, or you're getting somebody else to do it. And so there are some violations um, that are now codified in the statutes that talk about 
uh, how you can violate if you have an ignition interlock installed on your vehicle. And so they lay out six of those. Um, the first is failure to take a random breath alcohol concentration test. And so that's I if you're in the car and it beeps and you don't give a sample, well, that's a violation. Um, and if you get a violation, so how they do it is for a DUI first, and you have an ignition interlock on your vehicle, you have to have no violations for 90 days. And if you, if you stay and have no violations for a 90 day period within that four months, then you're good, you're, you're done. And uh, you, you can, uh, assuming that you complete your alcohol driver education classes, you can now get your license back. Um, now, if for a DUI second, third, fourth, and, and so on, you have to have no violations for 120 days. And so uh, another example of a violation would be failure to pass. Uh, so if you have uh, a blood alcohol concentration of over 0 0.02, um, then then that's, that's gonna be a violation. Um, if you failure to pay your ignition interlock provider fees, uh, failure to, to go and, and get your ignition interlock maintained, repaired, calibrated, monitored, inspected, and, and so forth. And so all of those are, are something that is going to make you have a longer license suspension uh, under this new system. And so the third takeaway is going to be that um, under the old law, you would first have to get court approval for your ignition interlock. And um, it, it, it was just basically a lot of red tape. Um, it was, you had to, there was two forms that you had to fill out. You had to get your, um, your proof of your driver's insurance, your proof of registration for the vehicle. Uh, you had to, to put it on the docket, get it in front of a judge, get a judge signature, but all, that judge signature only allowed you to apply to the Kentucky Department of Transportation. And so it, it was just one step that, that r frankly, nobody liked. And, and here in Fayette County, you actually had to get the prosecutor to, to, to approval, and the prosecutor here had to, to write a no opposition uh, to the court saying that they didn't oppose it. Um, just another step in, in the red tape process. With the new law, they, they've hopefully um, simplified it a lot more, um, especially if they're going to mandate it and they're going to provide huge incentives to get it, uh, they want to try to make it as easy as possible. And so this streamlined law is now going to just uh, take out the court, take out the judge signature for these ignition interlocks where somebody can apply directly to the Department of Transportation uh, and, and with, with some necessary forms. And so we're going to be providing those forms on our website shortly. Uh, it's my understanding that DOT is, is scrambling at this point to, to try to get everything up and running, um, and, and, and so we'll provide those as well. Uh, another takeaway is the alcohol driver education classes. Um, so if you're convicted of a DUI, any DUI, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, uh, you're going to have to take mandatory classes in order to reinstate your new license or to get your 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 normal license back and so under the old law um, you could not get started with those classes until there was a conviction and and what that meant was for especially like a DUI second um, those classes are meant to go a year long well if you refuse the test initially and your license is pretrial suspended you may not have a conviction for four, five, six months. And so you weren't allowed to do those classes during those six months. So what it would really do is, is prolong the license suspension uh, for over a year because you weren't able to finish the classes uh, within that year time period. And so now under the new law, you can get started with the ADE classes before conviction. And in a lot of cases, that's going to be a smart thing to do in order to get your license back as quick as possible. Um, and so one of the, the biggest changes, again, in, in this law 
is hardship license. And so a hardship license is, is when your license is suspended, um, then it will allow you to go to certain places with no ignition interlock, with, uh, with just, it's, it's, a, it's a new license, it's called a hardship license. There's, there's strict requirements for it, and um, th there's only limited application, but under the new law, it, it, it's expanded, and it, uh, there's some, some key differences that you're gonna need to know. So, um, the hardship license now is only for drug DUIs, and so it, it does not apply for alcohol DUIs. Um, and then the other requirement is it only applies for non-refusal DUIs. So you're gonna have to take a test it, when, it, when the officer asks for it, uh, for it to be, f to be eligible to, to receive the hardship license. And the hardship license only occurs after conviction. And so, um, so under the old law, you would have to wait 30 days uh, to, to be eligible for a hardship license. That is no longer the case anymore. Um, you're gonna be eligible immediately upon conviction, but it's gonna require court approval. And there's only limited reasons why you can get one. One of them is employment purposes, the other one's educational purposes, medical purposes, alcohol and substance abuse uh, treatment purposes, and court-ordered counseling programs. And so, for instance, if for an employer employment uh, reason, you would have to get an affidavit signed by your employer stating the reasons why um, they need you to, to, to be able to have the hardship license. Uh, for medical purposes, you would have to have a physician uh, sign an affidavit explaining why you would need that. And so um, this is a big change in, in the, from the previous law because um, take for instance here in Fayette County. The standard offer for a DUI first is 45 days. Now, there may be some situations where they offer higher, but normally a standard offer is 45 days. Uh, for under the old law, under a hardship license, you couldn't apply for that hardship until after that 30-day period. So then you would only really have the hardship license for 15 days. For a lot of people, that, that just wasn't worth it. Um, it if they needed it, uh, they would have ne needed it 30 days ago. And, and so um, another thing that, that prosecutors uh, would do and routinely is put in the plea agreement that you're not allowed to ask for a hardship license. And so that, that remains to be seen as far as whether or not um, uh, that they're going to continue that practice given the expansion of the hardship license under the new law. So... Um, talked about a lot of things and uh, just want to briefly talk about a couple practice tips uh, that, I, that I mentioned before just as a recap. Um, first and foremost, don't drink and drive. Um, that's the easiest way to, to avoid all of this. Um, you, you don't have to worry about hardship license, ignition interlocks, fees, alcohol driver education, court costs, attorney's fees. Um, it, it's just not smart. So, so we'll drink responsibly. Uh, use it, Uber, Lyfts, uh, ride sharing, wh whatever you do, just don't drink and drive. Um, if you are charged with um, a DUI, and it is a drug DUI, then I think that due to the, the current law now, everybody needs to be asking for a hardship license if they apply. Um, there, there's, there's really no reason not to. Now, as I stated previously, the prosecutors may try to, to put in the plea agreement that it, it's not, uh, you're not allowed to do that and, and negotiate that and put that in there, but um, there's always open pleas if, if you wanted to do that as well. But if that is not included in the plea agreement, then it makes no sense not to at least ask for the judge. Now, ultimately, the judge has to give it to you. And uh, depending on what the facts of the case are, depending on the characteristics or how compelling of a reason, they may very well deny it. But um, the way the current law is written, there's, there's no reason not to. Um, especially, it's going to save you a lot of money uh, in potential ignition interlock fees. But there's only certain and limited situations to ask for it. 
you need to ask your attorney if you would apply and um, and, it, and like I said it makes no you should um, and then um, talking about alcohol driver education classes uh, with the expansion of the new law um, a lot of times people will come and and the writing is is essentially on the wall we I mean they either blew a super high number um, they confessed to, to drinking 12 beers right before getting in the car um, they they look terrible on the body cam they uh, I mean so sometimes there's just bad cases where you, you're just not gonna have a lot to work with now obviously our job is, is to turn every stone to look at all the facts look at all the evidence see if there's anything that, that we can do in order to properly defend our clients but um, there are going to be instances where um, it would make a lot of sense in order to do those alcohol driver education classes sooner rather than later so you uh, don't avoid or so you don't uh, so you do avoid uh, having that longer license suspension than, than you sh than you need to and so um, some questions that I have as far as uh, going forward and at this point since the law is so new we, we don't really know how um, it how it's going to go going forward but um, how is the transportation cabinet going to be handling the capacity for all of these ignition interlock applications um, this is a th this is not going to be a small undertaking by any stretch of the imagination so if you're going to put into place um, procedures that highly incentivize the ignition interlock uh, to where people are going to be applying left and right because they're going to want to get their license back as quick as possible um, like for for instance I mean for a second offense you're looking at a difference between 12 and 18 months that's a huge difference um, for a first offense you're looking at the difference between four and six months um, it, I mean not only for for DUI fourths 30 to 60 months so that's that's a 30 month difference between the two so I anticipate a lot more ignition interlocks to, to be issued here in Kentucky and um, it, is the transportation cabinet going to be able to process those claims in a timely manner to where uh, people are going to get them and uh, efficiently um, and so that is that remains to be seen I hope they do um, and then the other question so if there's going to be videos in the in the vehicles uh, if those malfunction through no fault of the of the defendant of the person that's, that's paying for it uh, how are those violations calculated and um, is there a mechanism to challenge those those violations and so I believe that there is administratively um, a way but they they've now kind of taken away the 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 suspension a lot of the suspension authority from the courts and the county clerks and now they've given it to the transportation cabinet uh, what are those hearings going to look like if you do want to appeal um, and, and and that obviously remains to be seen at this point um, and then finally is, is our process prosecutors going to insist on not allowing hardship license in their standard plea offers uh, because there is so much of a uh, because of it there's so much expanded and, and, and again it, it only applies to to drug DUIs and non-refusal DUIs and so but in those instances will prosecutors insist that the, it is not included in the plea agreement that that you can ask for one and then also uh, given the expanded uh, will will judges even grant them um, there's there's statutory authority for the judges to but will they and so a lot remains to be seen there's going to be a lot of moving parts going forward as far as there was just forms that were just created uh, yesterday there's going to be some uh, new I'm sure regulations coming out soon and so it's an evolving area right now um, everybody's still trying to figure it out and, and and get where we need to be and so if you have any questions whatsoever about any of these uh, new laws or the procedures or, or anything about DUIs here in Kentucky that's what we're here for 
And so our office here is 300 West Short Street here in Lexington, Kentucky. I hope you found this informative, and uh, I just thank you so much for tuning in, and please give us a call. Thanks so much.